Oxford Bookworms, Stage One. The Witches of Pendle, by Rowena Akinyemi. Chapter One: The Peddler. The spring of sixteen thirty-four arrives, but in the prison of Lancaster Castle, it stays cold. The twenty women in the prison are dirty, hungry, and cold. There are no beds or chairs, and so they sleep on the cold floor. There are no windows, so it is always dark. The women want to get out of the prison; they want to go home. Sometimes, the guards open the big, old door, and put some bread and water on the floor. Then they close the door again. My name is Janet Device, and I am one of the twenty women in prison. Day after day, I sit on the cold floor, and wait. I want to feel warm again. I want to see the sky again. And Pendle Hill, the beautiful hill near my home. But I am in the dark prison of Lancaster Castle, and I sit on the cold floor, and wait. One day, something happens. The guards open the big old door. Jeanette Device, a guard calls. Come here at once, witch! Somebody wants to see you. I get up slowly, because I'm very cold, and I walk across the dark room to the door. Perhaps it's someone from Reed Hall. Perhaps I'm going home. Janet Device, be quick! The guard calls again. Someone is standing at the door with the guard. Janet, he says quietly. I see him then, a tall man, with brown hair and tired blue eyes. He is not from Reed Hall. It is Mister Webster, from the church at Kildwick. My legs stop moving, and suddenly, I want to sit down. Come on, come on. The guard says angrily. He begins to close the door. Come out here for a minute, Janet, Mister Webster says quietly. Sit down and eat something. I sit down at a little table near the door. Mister Webster gives me some bread and some meat, and I begin to eat hungrily. Ten minutes, the guard says. After ten minutes, she goes in again. Thank you, Mister Webster says. How is everyone at Reed Hall? I ask at last. Mister Webster smiles. Everyone is well. I was there yesterday. I close my eyes for a minute, Mister Webster. It's not true. I'm not a witch, you know. I know, Janet, Mister Webster says. Last week, I brought Edmund Robinson and his father into my church, and asked them about the boy's story. Many people believed Edmund's story, but some people didn't. Edmund Robinson is going to London tomorrow with his father, and a judge is going to question them. The guard comes back, and begins to open the door. Time, he says. Mister Webster stands up. God is here with you, Janet. Never forget that. You can be happy when God is with you. 
I stand up too, and take the bread from the table. Yes, Mr. Webster, God is with me. I believe that. But happy? How can I be happy? I go back into the dark prison, and the guard closes the door behind me. The women run to me. Bread! Give us bread! They cry. Quickly, I put the bread in my shirt. I don't want to lose it. I walk across the room and sit down on the floor. I am crying, but I feel a little better. Edmund Robinson of Newchurch is only ten years old. Edmund told lies about me, and about many women. He saw us at a witches' meeting, at a house called Horstones. It's not true, but many people believed him. What is he going to say in London? The truth, or more lies? But now, in the prison of Lancaster Castle, I want to tell my story. It is a story about rich men and angry villagers, about old women and hungry children. It is a true story, and it happened to me. I was born. In 1603, my family was always very poor, and after my father died, we were poorer. In winter, I was often ill, and I was always cold and hungry. In summer, I was sometimes ill, and I was often cold and hungry. We lived some miles. From the village of Newchurch, in an old house called Mulkin Tower. It was dirty and cold. The rain came in through the windows, and there were no doors. To the west was the big hill called Pendle. Pendle Hill was beautiful. I loved Pendle Hill, because it sat quietly all year, and watched me. My story begins on the eighteenth day of March, in the year sixteen twelve. I was nine years old, and my life began to change on that day. My mother and my grandmother were ill. And they sat on the floor, with their dogs, near the little fire. My sister Alison wanted to go out. I'm going to look for bread, she said. My brother James sat near the fire, his mouth open. Go and look for bread, he said. Go and look for bread. James often said things again and again. Alison ran out of the house, and I followed her. Go and look for bread, James called. Alison began to go east, up the hill, and past the big trees behind Malkin Tower. Alison walked fast. She was eighteen years old, and she was tall, with long, dirty brown hair, and a white, hungry face. It was cold, but there was no rain. Alison wore a coat and some shoes, but I had no coat, and no shoes. Please. Wait a minute," I called to my sister. 
I want to come with you. No, Alison cried. Go back! I don't want you. Suddenly, a dog ran in front of Alison. Good dog, good dog, Alison called. The dog ran to her, and she put her hand on its head. It was my sister's dog, and it liked her. It was a big dog with big teeth, and I didn't like it because it was always hungry. I followed Alison and her dog along the river to Colne. But before we arrived at Colne, we met John Law. John Law was a big, fat man, about fifty years old. Can I have some money, please? Alison called. I'm hungry. John Law didn't answer. He walked slowly because he was fat, and because he carried a big bag on his back. In his bag were a lot of beautiful things. He was a peddler, and he walked across the hills and visited all the villages. Can I have some money? Alison called again. I'm very hungry. John Law stopped. Stop following me, he said. I'm not going to give you money. Give me money, Alison said. I don't want to give you money, the peddler said. He took his hat off. There was not much hair on his head. I don't like you, and I don't like your family. A lot of bad women you are. And your father was a bad man too. Alison was angry. Don't talk about my father. He's dead now. Give me some money, old man. John Law's face was red. No, he cried. He began to walk up the hill to the village. Go back to your. Dirty family. Alison began to laugh angrily. <laughs> a dead man, a dead man. She called, "Dead before dark, John Law." She looked down at her dog, and put her hand on its head. Go after him, dog," she said. "Go after him." And get him. The big dog began to run after the peddler. John Law stopped. He looked afraid, and his face was very red. Call your dog back, you bad girl! He shouted. Suddenly, his mouth opened. And his face went white. Slowly, he began to fall, and his big body hit the road. The dog came up to him, but the peddler did not move. Alison watched John Law for a minute, then she said to me. Go and call someone from the village. I felt afraid, but I ran along the road very quickly. Help! Help! I called to the villagers. The peddler is ill. The villagers came out of their houses and followed me down the hill. A young man looked at John Law carefully. He's not dead. He said, 
but he's very ill. Let's move him to the nearest house. Someone must go and call his son. Just then, John Law began to talk very slowly. I can't move, he said. I'm alive, but I can't move. I went back to stand near Alison. The dog sat at her feet. That device, girl, John Law said slowly. She, she cursed me. She wanted me to die, and her dog came to get me. All the villagers looked at Alison. I'm sorry, Alison said quickly. I'm very hungry, and I wanted some money. That's all. Go away! The villagers cried. You're a witch, and we don't want you in our village. Alison began to run away down the hill, and her dog followed. I watched the villagers. They carried John Law slowly up the hill, to the nearest house. And then I followed my sister down the hill. I was hungry, and tired, and Malkin Tower was many miles away. I was nine years old, and I was angry. I was angry because the peddler was ill. I was angry because the villagers didn't like me. And I was angry because my sister was a witch.